Hello, everyone, and welcome. Yeah, great. Um, we are so glad that you're here today. We want to start by thanking the Navy Child and Youth Programs for making today's webinar, uh, Making Connections, Navigating Chains with Young Military Connected Children Possible. Um, thank you for taking the poll. If you want to go ahead and close that out, you can just click on the little X. It's it's really nice when we can get to see who is actually joining us today. And we see that we have professionals with us today. Thank you all for being here. We always welcome uh, professionals who work with our military connected children to our parent trainings. I know that you'll find the information and the tips that we present very helpful to you, maybe to share with your parents or just for you to use. But note that when we create these parent support webinars, they have been designed with parents as the target audience. So some of the verbiage is towards parents. So I wanna start by telling you a little bit about MSEC and who we are. The Military Child Education Coalition or MSEC is a nonprofit organization that was established nearly 25 years ago. Actually, we are celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. MSEC's mission is to support all military connected children by educating, advocating, and collaborating to resolve educational challenges associated with our military lifestyle. In 2005, MSEC formalized support and programming for our military connected parents so that they may be empowered, informed, and they can be proactive in supporting their children's educational journey. So we strive to deliver these informative and interactive webinars that address academic, social, and the emotional issues that are associated with the kind of mobile military family lifestyle. Our vision, M6 vision, is that every military connected child is college, work, and life ready. So great organization that we work for. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name again is Michelle Brashear. I'm joining you from the beautiful town of Madison, Alabama, uh, just outside of Huntsville, Alabama. My husband retired in 2015 after 30 years of uh, exciting active duty army service. So we have moved many times and lived as far away as Alaska and Germany. We have raised two incredible military connected children, uh, both who are currently in college, but we had them a little later in life. <laughs> and I have been enjoying my work with MSEC in supporting our military families since 2017. So I'm gonna turn it over to Nikki. Thanks, Michelle. My name is Nikki Harrison, and I have been with MSEC since 2018, so I'm coming up on my fifth anniversary. I was an active duty military spouse for almost 20 years, so just shy, like one month shy of 20 years. So now I am a veteran spouse to a retired Marine, and we have two sons um, I have a rising senior, so I am getting class of 2024 emails, which makes me a little sad. It's like a little <laughs> bittersweet. And uh, we have another son who is a seventh grader, so he's going to be in eighth grade. And I always forget to say where I reside, but I reside in El Paso, Texas. So thanks. Thank you so much for joining us. And let's move on to some of our administrative announcements for this morning. Um, I know that um, Michelle talked a little bit earlier um, about, uh, we have that downloadable resource that I think is in the chat box for you all. We'll go ahead and we'll share it again. Um, if you're joining by phone, you won't be able to access that. So um, please either message us privately um, and then we can email that to you. One of the things that we always like to talk about at the beginning is that we have a survey that will come after today's presentation. We would invite you to take that. It just takes about two to three minutes to complete, and it just gives us really valuable feedback that lets us know how we're doing. It lets our funders know how we're doing, and then if there is anything that you would like to give us input on so that we can continue offering um, the best trainings 
uh, possible for you. So that's important. I think most of you have found the chat box. Um, it's a little dialogue bubble on the bottom of your screen. I put in the chat box, if you would like to share your comments with the group, just make sure you change that little blue. It's like a little drop down um, menu next to the two to everyone instead of just host and panelists. So then everyone can see your comments because um, we just love that. So please feel free to utilize this feature in Zoom. And then we always um, wanna let you know that this webinar is being recorded and will be um, available for you to view at a later time. So if you have any technical difficulties during the presentation, please know that. So let's jump into our learning objectives for today. So by the end of this webinar, we are hoping that you'll be able to recognize some of those social, emotional, and education challenges um, that arise when our children are transitioning. We're gonna talk a little bit about the cycle of change. And so we're gonna kind of go through that. And then of course, talk about some effective strategies to help your military connected children navigate those changes. So we're going to, um, we have another poll for you. Great, it's up on the screen. We would love to know the ages of your children, zero to five, six to 11, or do you have children that are 12 years of age and older? Okay, so it looks like we're split. Um, we have a majority of people, kind of half, uh, zero to five, and then we have another half that are about 12 years uh, and older, and a few of you have that six to 11 year old range. So thank you. Thank you so much for taking that poll. That just gives us kind of an idea of the age ranges. Okay, so what uh, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this military lifestyle and uh, what type of changes are your children currently um, experiencing? If you could share in the chat box, we'd love that. Uh, we've put that question in there. And just let us know what types of changes your, your child or your children are currently experiencing. Um, I know for myself that I am currently experiencing um, my oldest son who is going into his senior year. So that's a big change for him. And we're talking about colleges and doing college tours this summer. So that's kind of a change that we have that's happening. Um, but we'd love to know if, if you're dealing with some, okay, leaving current school and house moving this summer. So some of you may be having an upcoming PCS or a transition, like a move. Um, okay, deployments. We have some of our participants that are experiencing a deployment this year. So that is definitely a huge change. So thank you for sharing. We know that dealing with change is not new for our military connected families, and it's part of the military lifestyle. So we're going to highlight some of those challenges and changes that are related specifically to our military families. So the first one is those frequent transitions. The um, typical uh, military connected child is going to move on average of six to nine times between kindergarten and their high school graduation. So there's a lot of transition that is happening. Um, those social and emotional challenges that come up, um, adapting to those new schools and communities. Um, there may be a lack of connection to teachers and or peers having to be the new kid all over again. I see someone says they're, they're moving um, with their own seven-year-old and also at the same time trying to assist military students um, that they work with as an MFLAC. So you kind of are, are seeing it on both sides there. So um, that's a lot of change. Um, also differing academic standards. Uh, every state's going to have their own version of their standardized test or end of grade uh, testing that they offer. Curriculum's going to look different. Um, schedules may be different. You may have children that are experiencing either learning gaps where they're missing content because of the school that they left hasn't taught it yet, or you may have children experiencing those overlaps where they've already learned the content um, that's being taught at that new school. Deployments, separations, retiring, 
Um, my husband retired last year. So that brought a ton of change for my family. He retired, we moved, you know, all the things happened in the midst of um, a summer. So that's really um, a big change. There could be trauma or loss. Um, the injury or loss of a parent is really a reality for our military connected kids. Um, we always like to highlight that we also have children that are hidden helpers um, up to the age of 18. And so those are our kids who are actively involved in or currently impacted by the care needs of a wounded, ill or injured veteran. So we always, you know, there can be trauma or loss that's being experienced and uncertainty fear of the unknown for our young children in particular. Um, depending on the age of your child, they may not understand what's going on. It looks like over half of you that are joining us today have kids that are in those age ranges of zero to five. So they're experiencing change um, and they may not know how to communicate how that change is affecting them. So there's a loss of that comfort of stability and certainty for them um, as well with maybe not the ability to, you know, to be able to effectively communicate that. So let's talk about that response to change. We've talked about all these different changes and challenges that may arise with that military lifestyle. So what's that response to it? We know that children are particularly vulnerable during major life changes, such as a PCS, um, move, you know, that sort of move, family separations that are due to trainings and or deployments, or service members leaving the military. So this response is gonna depend on a variety of factors. Age is a huge factor, right? If you're, you're transitioning or PCSing with a 13 year old, it's gonna look a lot different for, for them than it is for a three year old. Maturity comes into play, those parent and child relationships and even coping skills. So their unique developmental uh, viewpoint and limited life experience, especially for our young children, can put them at an increased risk for stress during this change. So we want to be able to identify and understand all of those issues and needs of, of the child, whether they're social and emotional or educational. So research suggests that deployments and separation pose an increased risk of adverse outcomes for our military connected children. So this can look like distress. Um, this could look like some mental health challenges. Maybe it's affecting their academic achievement. That's something um, that happens as well. You may see changes in behavior. Your young children may show signs of stress in the form of um, acting out, so tantrums or defiance. Um, you may see some regression even in potty training. Um, nightmares sometimes come up. And then our school age children may have worries and fears and they may have difficulty concentrating. Um, they could even have some outbursts, things like that. Um, but we know that you want to continue to support them because these behavioral changes eventually will pass and they may need some increased attention from you, you as the parents, as well as other trusted adults um, that are in their life. So that's something to keep in mind. So that cycle of change. Uh, this is important. We think this is, um, we talk about, um, I, if any of you have attended any of our webinars where we talk about kind of grief and trauma and there's um, cycles and phases to that, there's also the same for our change. So each phase of the transition cycle, we're going to kind of walk through. So that first one is denial. Um, this is that feeling that it's not happening. You're not going to think about it. Um, you're not moving, we're not going anywhere, um, and you're just in complete denial. That was kind of me last year because I lived 10 minutes from the beach. So I was in a little bit of denial. Uh, the next is that resistance, that you're going to stay where you're at um, with your friends. You're going to refuse to do anything. You're going to talk about it's better where you were before. You're not participating or joining, and you may see that um, in your children. That third stage um, is exploration. And this is kind of where we've, we've kind of reached the other side, where our children realize that the transition is inevitable. 
um, they might as well make the best of it and explore kind of all their options. This is the stage where kids develop acceptance and they create new expectations. And this is where they're going to build those resiliency skills that we'll talk about a little bit later. And then that last stage is commitment. This is where children decide to fully become part of the community. You may see them starting to get a really good group of friends together. Um, they may start participating in those extracurricular activities that they did at the, at the previous location. Maybe they're even trying some new things out. We know that in this stage, personal and academic growth takes place when students are in this stage. So that's really important. So next, building resiliency. This is what we, I feel like this is like what we talk about all the time when we talk about military connected families is resiliency. We know that resilient children know that they've gone through changes and transitions in the past, but they realize that they have what it takes to make it. Or a lot of times we like to say the, they have the ability to bounce back when they encounter a challenge. So Dr. Ken Ginsberg, who has been a longstanding member of MSEC Science Advisory Board, has written an article for parents on building resilience in these uncertain times. And we'll share that link in the chat box. It's a great article, I have read it, and it offers those practical strategies on dealing with change and uncertainty um, like we've experienced during the past pandemic and of course continue experiencing um, as highly mobile families. So I'm going to hand it over to Michelle and she's gonna talk about communication. Thank you, Nikki. So one of the best ways to help our children develop resilience is to keep that open line of communication with them. Communication helps our children feel understood. So that regular open communication reassures them that we as caring adults will stay connected to them and are interested in helping them and that they're not alone. So when children feel supported, then they can face those challenges with optimism and the strength to face whatever it is they're up against. So when we know that changes are ahead, we can help prepare our children for this change. It helps them know what to expect. Communication helps uh, let our children know that you love them unconditionally and you support them. And one of the things that also helps is for us to be honest with them. So we mentioned letting kids know what to expect. Don't withhold troubling information from your children as a way to protect them. This often leaves children feeling excluded rather than protected. And children often sense that change and they actually might start imagining the worst, you know, worse than actually what is actually occurring. So if we want a child to be honest with us about difficult things, then we need to model that honest talking, then it's part of our family culture. So when we share information with our kids, we do need to share the age appropriate information. But again, this will still empower our children. Just tell them what's happening and explain why and help them understand it at their level. For very young children, you can use visuals like pictures or role playing with puppets, you know, as to what's happening. You know, let your children know that their questions deserve a good answer from you, which may mean you have to get more information first. You don't always have, you know, the, the right answer right away. So along with your responses, you want to ask your children to tell you more about their thoughts or, you know, what led them to the worry or that led them to the question. And, you know, you can't truly answer a question if you don't know what the real question or what the real worry is. So we can help our children prepare for upcoming changes, such as moving. We wanna encourage our small children to say goodbye and let them know that they'll probably miss their friends and that's okay. They might miss their teachers. They might even miss places like their playground or a favorite place to eat that won't be at their new location. So you may wanna help your child create their own book, like a scrapbook to help them feel connected to those people or that place that they're leaving. So when changes are in the schools, talk about it and involve your children as best as you can in the process. Explain to them what you need to do, have them at the meetings when they're able to be there. 
start building a portfolio together with your child with work samples and some of those important documents that may be required at the next school. Again, doing this together helps instill that your child have a stake in their own education. It also, this portfolio also will help you with the transition and mitigate some of those challenges that we talked about earlier with moves. So children who can effectively express their emotions through language are an advantage when they're communicating with ourselves or with others when they're dealing with stress. However, young children may not already have those vocabulary available to express themselves, so they may act out in frustration or in anger, so it's important that we realize that. Understanding emotions is critical to their overall development, so teach them to give their feelings names. Provide opportunities to identify their feelings. Books are a great way to do this. Watching their, TV, their, their favorite TV shows together with them, you can point out emotions. Sometimes just putting a label on emotion can help reduce the concern of the problem. You know, it's okay, I see that you're feeling sad. Help them, help, help them label it. You can also encourage your young children to draw out their feelings. You know, with older kids, sometimes they'll write in a journal, but little kids, sometimes it's fun for them to draw out those feelings. We're gonna watch a quick video of talking about how to help children control those emotions. Hi, I'm Catherine Mogul. I'm the director of training for the UCLA Nathanson Family Resilience Center. And thinking about emotions, I think we can all remember back to a time when we were kids and emotions just kind of washed over us and and Took, took over our bodies and we weren't able to express it. And a parent's job is really to help define that process and give their child the words to be able to express and deal with emotions. The first step to this is just labeling your own emotions. As an adult, you have experiences all throughout the day that uh, bring up different feelings. And when you have that, just say it. So if you get cut off in traffic, just say, I feel frustrated right now. Uh, the next thing you could do is label your child's emotions as you see them moving through their day and you see different experiences bringing up feelings for them say you feel frustrated because that lego set won't go together the right way or positively you feel really happy because you really love this tv show then you want to define your own coping strategies you want to uh, tell your child all the things you do that help you feel better so maybe for you that's taking three slow deep breaths um, when your child sees you taking the deep breaths, then turn to them and say, I took three slow deep breaths. That labels it for them so that they learn the name for the strategy. And you also want to support your child's coping. Identify the things that you know help your child to feel better. Maybe that's uh, getting a hug from a parent or um, playing a quick uh, video game that you know that they love that kind of helps them to take a break. And again, label that. Label the strategy for them so they know that that's what you're doing and what you're helping them to use. And you can do all of these strategies, you can teach all of these strategies in everyday life, you can teach it through play. So you can just be the sportscaster while, while your child is playing and label what they're doing, describe what they're doing, but make sure to take an extra beat to pay attention to the emotions in the play. So you may say, you're taking the dolls on a walk and they look really happy to be walking together. These strategies are really the building blocks for your child's future success in life. So I like the things she says, talk about the feelings during the day, not only theirs, but your own, because they're watching you. And then coping strategies, share them, share what you're doing um, and support what they do. So one of the things that MSEC has created is the Military Child Wellbeing Toolkit. And this toolkit shares resources and supports uh, to foster overall well-being for our military connected children. And if you look at this, just this one page, you see where there's a focus for different people that are looking at the, 
the well-being toolkit. There's one for parents and professionals, one for parents of young children, and then one for schools. So you know, we encourage you to check that out and the kids put the link in the chat box. Um, but that's that's for anyone to look at. And so please look at that and share. So one of the things we talked about, I talked about looking at reading books. So maybe story time. It's a great, a great way to help children understand change, discuss those feelings and learn about emotions. Most of books that you have incur, include emotions and feelings of their characters. So while reading, ask the child like things like, what do you think he or she's feeling? Look at her face, you know, can you tell what they're feeling from their face? You know, the goal is to connect the body language to that feeling word that you're talking about. Pause and talk about what's developing in the book. Talk about the characters and what they're facing. Why are they feeling the way they're feeling? Choose stories that they can identify with. For example, when they're moving, maybe choose a book about moving to help that child be prepared for feelings that they might have. Reading or listening to stories together also helps build empathy in children. So the ability to feel empathy and to understand another perspective is the foundation for future relationships and quite frankly, success in life where you wanna understand how other people are, are reacting. So looking at pictures and reading about others who have gone through similar situations can be a very effective way to help children understand and imitate even positive coping skills as well as develop that empathy. And I'm gonna send it back to Nikki to talk about routines. Okay. So we have a saying that we hear at MSEC within our parent support uh, trainings to do routine things routinely, which is so important. We know that routines are something that our children thrive off of, especially when an environment has structure and some predictability to it. Um, it's, research has really shown that there's a lot of benefits to routines. So kids can learn responsibility, goal setting, prioritization, um, providing that predictability and that stability when everything else is changing is really important. So if you have a special event or activity that you do on a weekly basis, so maybe Friday night game night, you know, with the family or Saturday nights, uh, Saturday evenings or pizza nights. Keep those routines, even when you're having those changes and those transitions, so that your children know what to expect. It's going to help them with that adjustment to those changes. And so um, having those routines is going to be important. If you have an evening routine, make sure that that kind of helps prepare for the next day to reduce those additional stresses um, especially in the morning. Um, morning routines start the day on a positive note. So again, that predictability really helps. Schedules can be especially comforting to children that are experiencing change, grief, and or loss. So sometimes there's going to be good days, um, which are simply ones with predictable activities and accustomed rituals. And for your little ones, you may wanna consider daily schedules in a picture format. Um, you know, it's a little bit different for our older kids. So something that you can show them that has a picture. I loved, um, actually, I feel like my uh, oldest son used to have, their teacher used to have like a little clock. And then for certain times on the clock, there would be like little pictures for when, you know, certain things were happening throughout the day. And it was great. And the kids really, um, you know, they got used to that clock, right? Um, and helps with time as well. I think that helped with time. Um, and then when kids know what to expect from their day, they're going to notice and understand how their actions affect outcomes. So learn about, uh, about that delayed gratification and how they can hang on through a difficult activity, especially when they know a fun one is around the corner. But be mindful about avoiding overscheduling um, for your children, especially during these times where there's a lot of uncertainty and changes that are happening. So you want to build in those, those break times for them um, or maybe lessen the activities that they ordinarily would be participating in. So during the times of changes and challenges, 
we get that sense of losing control. Um, you know, we're, we, we have that loss of control. We feel it a lot of times as parents and we know that our children feel it as well. So how do we give back control? Um, because that's one of those cornerstones for fostering resiliency in a child. And again, a little bit earlier, we talked about Dr. Ken Ginsburg, but he states that when children realize that they can control the outcomes of their decisions and actions, they're more likely to know what they have the ability to do. And again, that ability to bounce back. So on the other hand, a child who feels everything always happens to me tends to become passive, maybe even potentially pessimistic or even depressed. So we've put a link in the chat box to those seven C's of resiliency and those building blocks, which I think are great. So what are some of the things that we can do to give them back that control? Allow choices. Um, of course, I always feel like these are like limited choices <laughs> depending <laughs> on the, age of the child, right? So maybe it's what they can wear, they can choose their attire, maybe it's what to pack or game to play, or if you have little ones, what toy box to put the toys in. This can help reduce those tantrums and that anger. It can also help children recognize when to ask them what they would like and when they'll when their uh, those choices will be honored. So I think this kind of helps with that. Um, maybe if you're uh, some of you've mentioned that you're getting ready to PCS, think about packing your child's room last. Um, and setting it up first at the new location. And of course, I think this is age specific, but I know once my boys got to a certain age, I had, you know, all of their box went, boxes went in their room and that was their time to open boxes and start putting things away. And it gave them some sense of control, right? Like my new room with my things. Um, and you can do that with your little ones too. And then you're going to have to let some things go. So help your child learn to let things go when they can't change them. So we want them to learn to focus on things that they can do something about instead of stressing about things that are out of their control and they can't change. So let's talk about HALT. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. And I feel like, again, as adults, we can relate to this. But when your children is experiencing any of these feelings, dealing with change is going to be that much more difficult. So you want to wait to talk to your child or working through a problem when they're no longer hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Some things that you can do to help with this is make sure that sleep is a priority. Uh, sleep is a vital um, part of minimizing stress, boosting mood, and improving school performance. And we know that preschoolers on average need about 10 to 13 hours of sleep, and our school-age children need 9 to 11. As parents, you know your child best. If your child needs 14 hours of sleep to you know, effectively function, then, then that's what they need. And then let's teach our children to listen to their bodies. So while we know it's normal for a child to have an upset stomach on the first day of school, because maybe they're feeling a little anxious or leaving class because um, their stomach hurts, right? Um, those can also be signs of distress. So watch for those signs um, of that negative stress and exercising can be a great way of reducing that and staying healthy. So, you know, kind of incorporate that. And depending on your child, you know, different activities will work for them. So you could use exercise or meditation or having them lay down. Um, so just keep those things in mind as well. So spending quality time together, this is important when you're going through changes and transitions. Make sure that you're kind of connecting with your child, um, helping them feel supported and loved during that change. Um, it doesn't always require special planning or special activities or events. Quality time is just when you give your child your full attention. If you've got younger kids, we think incorporating play is great. Um, you can do this naturally. 
Maybe you combine that with a physical activity. I think that's always great, especially if you're going to a new location, you know your, your kids are interested in certain activities, research that ahead of time. And then when you get there, you can you know, find that um, park or that um, rock wall uh, climbing place that they, they had at their previous um, location. And just also have some unstructured playtime incorporated in. And these are all things that are going to help that reduction in stress with your kids. Hey, Michelle. Thank you. <clears throat> so we talk a little bit about some of the negative things about military lifestyle, all the moving and all the challenges, but military lifestyle also has many positives. So we are gonna first ask you, what are some of the positive aspects of the military lifestyle for your kids. So if you would answer that in the chat box, thank you, Nikki, put that question right in the chat box. What are some of the positive aspects of the military lifestyle for kids? Yes, I would say get to see the world. Is it that I, I agree with that on my for my kids. They really weren't excited to travel a lot, but wow, yeah, used to diversity. They um once we did do some traveling that when we were stationed in Germany, you got to see a lot of different things. So yeah, that's a big one. New experiences, like new diversity, new cultures, kind of the same thing. Ah, opportunities for a fresh start. That can work for parents as well. <laughs> I, I always say I, I, I always volunteered a lot in the military because I knew my time was limited <laughs> because whenever we, we moved and my volunteer slot in that particular uh, location was over. And yes, especially with social media, I and our, our grown children have friends all over the world, right? Maybe Sarah, not just the country. So great, great, great. Yeah, great. Thanks for sharing those. Lots of positives, right? <laughs> lots and lots of positives. So some of the other things are they may be more adaptable, like we said, more flexible. They, they know they have to adjust to new communities and they know how to do it they have transferred from different schools and they're more confident because they know that they've done it. Dr. Ginsburg, we talked about before, states that military children learn to build confidence as they navigate and learn to adjust to all these different surroundings and all these different people. Those connections are the most positive and protective force at the same time. Researchers have found that connections to family and community make a very positive impact towards protecting our military kids and allowing them to have that sense of confidence. Those connections provide all of us with a sense of security to be authentic and feel comfortable with taking these chances. And during times of crisis, we turn to people with whom we share our deepest and closest connections to regroup and remind ourselves that we're really part of a, a family or a community that adds purpose in life and, and um, it adds purpose to our lives. And Dr. Ginsburg, um, I guess maybe the chat box has his um, essential building blocks of resilience, the seven C's might in there one more time. So again, with the positive connections, our families tend to be closer knit. Fam our families are a central source of support for many of our military children, given the fact that these frequent transitions and separations that families understand that the separation is part of the military life, but it can actually strengthen the bond between the children and the parents. I know my two kids are you know, each other's best friends every time we move. So they definitely drew them closer, Nikki can agree. Um, the absences of a parent can also help improve relationships with an ex the extended family as the parent at home reaches out for support often to the grandparents, to the extended family, aunts and uncles. So those strong connections are vital because studies have actually found that having those strong relationships with at least one trusted adult can offset those effects of adversity for our kids. And then military community has its own support. They have the opportunity to gain experience, the connections and belonging to that military community as a whole, that purpose-driven organization that is the military. Yes, yeah, stay at home, right? Yes, yeah, stay at home school to support their children. Yeah, we were talking about that right before, weren't we, Nikki, about the stay at home, the at home um, parents. We have shared 
military culture and values. So all of these teamwork, uniformity, it's free to core, you know, a feeling of camaraderie and community. This is all a positive connection within the military. Those shared tradition that bind military families together with that larger community, like raising or lowering the flag at the start of the end of the day. Any of you that have lived in a military base know those are two big important parts of the day, right? Um, different language, right? Different uh, military jargon, PCS, TDY, all those things that we know are our own language. And instead of common values, like pausing during the national anthem to honor the country and those that lost their lives defending it. So parents are not alone in this journey, and we're going to take you on a little some time here to highlight some of the most important educational supports that are available to you and, and to those military connected um, professionals as well. So the first one is the Military Interstate Children's Compact Commission on Educational Opportunity for Military Children, or MIC-3. And the goal of the Interstate Compact, Compact is to replace the widely varying policies affecting transitioning military students and addressing some of the key educational transition issues from one school to the next, including enrollment, placement, attendance, eligibility, those graduation requirements can change. Uh, for example, it addresses kindergarten entrance age and placement uh, in it from one class to another, or maybe even missing tryouts if you're in some kind of an activity, sports or arts. So you want to visit the website, this MIC-3 MIC website, and read about your child's rights because school districts are not always up to date on these policies. So if you're up to date on them, then you can express it to them and they can help you. <clears throat> it's the best to connect the school liaison who can help you with specific questions regarding this interstate compact. And we actually just completed a subject matter expert uh, webinar on how military, how this MIC-3 helps military kids stay on track for graduation. So for those older kids, those of you that work with older kids, maybe. And so we would encourage you to check out that webinar. Purple Star school designations are being earned all over the country right now. If you haven't already heard, Purple Star schools are schools that have committed to supporting our military connected children. Uh, they support our military connected children and their specific needs. So the Purple Star program is designed to help schools respond to the educational and social emotional challenges and the needs for our active duty students, our National Guard and Reserve. <clears throat> Excuse me, MSEC, Military Child Education Coalition, is a national advocate for Purple Star schools and provides the most complete resources. And recently we have released a Purple Star School map and that link is in the chat box if you're curious as to what schools have been awarded Purple Star. Um, School Quest, to those of you who have not heard of School Quest, it is a wonderful tool created by MSEC. It's an online website that helps military families manage those school moves a little bit easier. It is an interactive, free tool designed to support those highly, our highly mobile military families and students, but actually can help any family. So if you know someone else who thinks that they can benefit from this, please do share. It helps families make the choices for their students before, during, and after a PCS move, which increases the chance of academic success for them and their well-being. Some of the main features, as you can see here, is an academic tracker, make sure they're on course, a student profile, which you enter in, uh, reminders, you can set up notifications, you can create personalized checklists, although there are some checklists there, and you can search schools. So if you know where you're going, that's a great, uh, a great thing you can use. Also, MSEC has the military student consultants, and our military student consultants provide one-on-one -on -one support for advocacy and problem-solving resources. Um, to assist military family connected, military connected families and professionals on their educational related questions. So that's uh, information on the screen for contact. And Nikki put the information in the chat box as well. So that's for parents and for professionals. 
and am sick. We have 25 years of helping our military connected children and their families successfully manage transition and mobility issues. So take the time and explore the MSEC website. There is so much information and all there supporting our military connected families and students. Take advantage of the student to student program in your, in your area. If you're scheduled to move, um, we reassure parents that once your child is able to meet that one good friend, that things usually work out okay for them. And student to student helps reassure they have those people there at the new location. Sometimes kids say that the first days are their worst day when they don't know the way around or as Nikki will is giving a workshop on tomorrow. <laughs> oh, who to sit with at lunch. <laughs> yes, tomorrow, tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> who to sit with at lunch. So there is a workshop on who do I sit with at lunch. Um, so check if your schools have one. A lot of elementary school programs do have them, um, or perhaps you can get one started in that new elementary school. And these programs do help children with transitions, and they create that positive environment, especially when they're first arriving at the school. Also check out the youth sponsorship programs. These help military connected children connect with their peers so that your child may already know someone before they show up at that new school. So reach out to your school liaison if you wanna participate in that for your student. And I'm gonna transfer it back to Nikki to talk about some even more supports. Okay, so we have um, the Military Kids Connect, which is an amazing online community for military children ages six to 17 with resources, activities, and an online community to build understanding, resilience, and coping skills. And we've put that link in the chat box. I think this is a really great one. Um, there's also Sesame Street. I feel like we talk so much about Sesame Street um, especially because MSEC does a lot of collaborations with them, but they have um, specifically some resources for our military families and their young children. And really the topics are deployments, relocation, long-term caregiving, and they actually have a whole like um, racial injustice kind of diversity um, booklet as well and some resources for that. We also talked a little bit earlier about those youth caregivers, also known as the hidden helpers. Um, there's information um, that we put that link in the chat box as well. We have Operation Purple Camp, which offers military kids a free week of camp where they connect with other kids just like them. This is offered through the NMFA, the National Military Family Association. So um, great camps, um, children from all uniform services, including the National Guard, Reserve, Space Force, and the Commission Corps of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the United States Public Health Service may apply. They also have remote camps. So my youngest son has done the like the uh, virtual camp and they also have in-person ones. If maybe a location um, for the in-person isn't specific, you know, you know, where you're at. Some other supports that we have um, is we know that sometimes those major changes can push families to the limit. So reaching out for help models um, that as strong individuals, we seek support and guidance. So please feel free and don't hesitate to reach out to someone that you feel is a trusted medical professional, either a physician or a counselor, especially if your child needs additional services. The MFLAC program or the Military and Family Life Counseling Program supports service members, their families, and survivors with non-medical counseling worldwide. Trained to work with the military community, they are just amazing. They deliver those face-to-face uh, -face counseling services, briefings, and presentations, both um, within the military community, both on and off the installation. Um, MFLACs can be embedded in a um, in a unit, or they can also be in a school as well. So um, it's really a great program. Confidentiality is important um, to them. And we also have Military One Source as a great resource for our military connected families as well. And so we've put those links in the chat box to some really great programs. 
So in our final thoughts, um, you know, we hope that you've been able to recognize some of those social, emotional, and education challenges um, that our children are faced with transitions and change. Um, we talked about that cycle. We've given a lot of effective strategies, and I feel like a plethora of resources, all that uh, are also in the handout, the resource that we put in the, the chat box, um, all of the things that we've put, um, it talked about here and that we've dropped links are also in that. And just keep in mind as parents, you always know your child best and you are their first and best advocate um, and the constant during those times of transition and change. So continue to kind of focus on that positive, to help your children grow and develop through the challenges that they hopefully can master them successfully. And those opportunities to kind of learn um, to embrace uncertainty and grow from that experience. So I think that's what's important because we know change is inevitable, right? It's a part of life. Well, we always kind of will um, be impacted by change in some way, shape or form. So we'd like to say again, thank you for joining us um, this morning or afternoon, depending on where you're located. Um, we have our survey that we talked about a little bit earlier. We put that link in the chat box. The four digit webinar code is 5523. So don't forget to put that code in. And it just takes a few minutes to fill out. Again, lets us know how we're doing. You can either click on the link scan the QR code, or you will also receive an email um, with the survey to be able to access the survey that way. Um, and just make sure you click submit um, when you do that. And so we'd love for you to do that. We also have recordings. If you've missed one of our previous webinars and you may want to view it again, you can find those on our website. Um, and you can actually uh, click the little drop down menu like what you see on the screen and look by um, by actually like title. So it's a really great way to go back and view some of our previous webinars. We have lots of professional development institute opportunities that we offer just like this um, webinar here. So you can check out our website for those. If you haven't already, please like and follow us on all of those social media platforms. It'll allow you to stay up to date on everything that's happening um, within MSEC. We talked already a little bit earlier about SchoolQuest. Um, it's a great online interactive tool. It's designed specifically for our highly mobile military families and it's free. So please feel free to uh, register for that today. And we did talk about our MSCs, great uh, premier uh, resource here at MSEC, those military student consultants. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to them. They're amazing. And I actually think they have about a 24 hour response time. So if they don't have the answer to your question, they will find one for you. And our well-being toolkit we talked about earlier, great resource for parents and professionals. Um, I even love that there are some interactive tools that are part of that toolkit. So I love that. And we mentioned that this year is MSEC's 25th anniversary. We are having our global training summit in Washington, DC from July 24th through July 26th. If you'd like to attend, registration's open, and we've put that link in the chat box as well. And our certificate of completion, if you'd like to receive one, please email um, and contact um, at that link that we've listed there, or that email address, I should say. And some of our upcoming webinars, I think Michelle mentioned tomorrow, you will see me again. Um, where do I sit at lunch? Being the new kid in middle and high school. So we have a really great um, webinar tomorrow um, on the 24th of May. And then our next one, we will be back on Tuesday, June 6th for strengthening relationships during military transitions. And all of our webinars start at noon Eastern Standard Time. So we'd always like to remind you of that. And we've put those links to register in the chat box. 
And we just like to end by giving a special thank you again to the Navy Child and Youth Programs for making today's webinar possible. We thank you all for spending some time with us today. Um, and we hope that you have enjoyed the webinar um, and uh, we hope to see you at a future webinar as well. So uh, 